in this life. You have to learn to get used to that and deal with it and not let it get you depressed and get you down. All right. This is uh, Ephesians chapter 3. We guess I'm mainly focusing on verse 20, but I put verse 21 in there because it's really good. Now unto him, I'm talking about God, who is able to do um, above all that we, guess what that word is, ask or even Think. All right, now, what, what's he able to do? Not just more, but this is a word that's kind of a, like the idea of more, except lots and lots more. Exceedingly. And this is another word. Yeah, this, abundantly. Yeah, abundantly. Yeah. He was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the something that works in us. Of course, he's talking about the Holy Spirit working in us, but the Spirit is is strong. The Spirit is able to do things. The Spirit has what's the word that goes with power? Power, <laughs> strength. <laughs> yeah, strength and ability, power. According to the power that works in us, now to Him who is able to do exceeding abundantly with all that we ask, we think according to the power that works in us. I want to talk more about that in just a minute. But let's go ahead and finish this, unto him be, this is something we give to him, glory in the, this is what we are, if we belong to Jesus, we're part of this, we usually think of these as local bodies of believers, but church, you know, the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all, how long, throughout all ages, world without end, amen, yeah, <laughs> now, this is a great verse, of encouragement of what God can do through you, through me, through us. He's able. Uh, you don't know them, but two of my favorite singers are a married couple, the Mansions. They, they, they went to church with us in Preston Wood Baptist Church before, but they've done a lot of CDs and stuff like that in the past. But married couple, and, and one of the songs they wrote is called He Is Able. And I love that song because it focuses on God's power in us. He's able. He's able. He can do what needs to be done. Exceedingly abundantly, not just not just what we ask. He's able to not just do what we ask. He's able to do whatever we think. And he's able to do above what we ask or think. He's even able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. He's even able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that works in us. He's just stressing how strong God is. Now, that doesn't mean God is going to indulge us in our greed and selfishness. You know, I, I can't say, okay, Lord, you said you'd do exceeding above, 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 above all I ask or think, so this is what I want, now do it. <laughs> no, we say, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. I want to have what you want me to have because I know that's what's going to bring you the most glory, and I know you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think that will bring you glory. That will be a blessing to me and others in, a, in the best way possible, in the in a lasting way, and 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 that doesn't mean you get all you want. Much of the things we think we want, someday we'll look back and realize, man, that was stupid. And and things that we wish God would take out of our lives and stop, whether it's pain or suffering or difficulties, we look back on that and say, whoa. God was teaching me 
for a while I was just too rebellious and stubborn and selfish to learn but when I got myself open to him and I could learn he was teaching me some really good stuff in the difficult times he's able to do exceeding abundantly of all that we ask or think of with the power that works in us so it's a it's a just a great reminder of his of his power and his ability and then it's at the end it's praise I don't necessarily expect you to memorize this but unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. It's just an expression of praise. Uh, so we're here. We're part of the church, all of us who belong to him. There's, there are two ways that the church is used in the Bible. It's used as a universal church. That is, all the believers, we're all part of the church. But then there are local churches, of course, where we meet on usually Sundays and worship Him and study His Word and fellowship with other believers. Locally. Now unto Him, who is able to do exceeding, exceeding, yeah, I guess it should be, but this translation says exceeding abundantly above, above all that we ask or think. Now unto Him, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. To him, so that we exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask of him. According to the power that works in us, according to the power that works in us. And then, if we can, unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus, throughout all ages, the world that Start it. Unto him is able to exceed him above all that we ask or think. And he, and he explains how he does that. According yeah, to the power that works in us. And then there's that, that's the, that's the main thing I want you to memorize. But there's a, there's a praise at the end. Can you do that? Unto him. Where? Yep. Uh -huh. By Christ Jesus. Uh, how long? Throughout all ages, world without end. It's good. good stuff. All right. Very good. Anything you want to say before I pray? Father, thank you so much for this day. Another day of life you've given us. And Lord, for some people, another day of difficulty another day of problems, another day of struggle, another day when they wish things could change. Lord, if we're in that situation, I pray you'd help us, please help us, not to moan and groan and gripe and complain and feel sorry for ourselves and be self-centered, but help us to realize you're teaching us some valuable things. We just learn to trust you in the difficult times. If we learn to keep our focus on you, you're going to work good out of all these difficult times. But Lord, thank you for reminding us of your power this morning. And we want to give you lots of praise for your power. Because you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Lord, we can, we can imagine a lot of things and we can think and ask a lot of things. And Lord, you're able to do that. You're able to do more than that abundantly more, exceedingly abundantly more. Lord, you just kind of pile up the answers and adverbs here to remind us of what you can do. So Lord, help us to realize this and to realize that you are working in us with incredible power. Power of your Holy Spirit in us. And Lord, we know you didn't give us the Holy Spirit to meet our greeds and our selfish desires and to satisfy our selfish wants. But Lord, you empower us with the Holy Spirit to bring you glory, uh, to meet the needs of others. And of course, in the process, give us a lot of joy and purpose and meaning in life. And Lord, we, we are around a lot of people who've lost their joy. They don't have any peace. They don't have any joy. They're, 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 they're angry. They're irritated. They're sullen. They're depressed. They're discouraged. They're, they're cranky. And Lord, we don't want to be like that. So help us not to learn from those kind of people. Help us instead to bubble over with a fountain of joy 
so that others can see the joy of you in us. And Lord, we know that's a source of strength. You told us in your word, your joy is a source of strength. So I pray, Lord, for these kids that they can find and live in your joy and not be so self-centered. Lord, the world is ruining a lot of kids by making them so focused on themselves and being cool and impressing others that they're just losing their joy. So I pray, Lord, that you'd help them to find that joy in you to learn to focus on you. And today, Lord, as we study just a little bit more of uh, what will help us be more effective at standing firm in Jesus and more effective in uh, obeying the command of 1 Peter 3.15, able to give an answer to him when I ask for some hope that's in us. A little more equipped, a little better equipped, a little better prepared to be faithful warriors of Jesus. Lord, would you please help us listen well and, uh, and learn and uh, become more like Jesus. We pray in his name. We were watching the video on sources of authority last time. So I'm going to pick it up where we left off. Back up a minute or so. We'll finish this and maybe watch it a little bit more. And then actually about the fine tuning of the universe, maybe. Let's see. I think this will be okay. I'm going to stop right there just a second and just share a couple of things. I'll probably forget. Uh, the. Uh, I've got a friend, young guy, he's a college student at Tennessee Western, and he and I have been meeting once a week or not sometimes every two weeks, it depends, but just to kind of do a little brainstorming and talking about the Lord, talking about the Bible and that kind of stuff. He, he, had, he had a friend, he's got another friend, he also goes to college, he's a year older than he is, but they, I think they were in the same grade, and this other friend had left the Lord. He, he's, and, and the friend's testimony to him was, I went to a Christian school my whole life. But he said, we had a whole bunch of kids there. And, said, and, and he said, everybody, I don't believe everybody, but you know how people will talk. But the guy said, everybody that went there said there was a Christian, but nobody acted like it. And I thought, whoa, what a sad, sad testimony for a Christian school. And my prayer is that we will we will really act like it. I mean, there are people out there who are determined they're not going to listen. They're not going to be teachable. They're going to they're just they're just they're, they're not they're not they're not and they're resisting. And it's really sad. That's, that's what made me think of it, is this this guy you know these unteachable people who who just make up their mind they're not going to believe. But this same same kid that I'm talking with, who, who's a pretty strong Christian there, Tennessee Wesley, he was talking to a professor the other day. And the professor is a, a, a religion professor now. He's a religion professor, but he believes in evolution. And and major, you may know him, major, major uh, phrase, but just because we're talking about major, uh, told the professor, well, I don't believe in evolution. I'm a creationist. I don't believe God used evolution. And he said, the professor got angry. <laughs> and, and, and he said, that's, that's, that seems crazy in and of itself. But like the professor was acting like, you're acting like an idiot. You don't believe in evolution? Everybody believes in evolution, except the idiots. <laughs> you know? Now, I guarantee that professor has probably never seen what you've already seen in, in this course. He doesn't know. He just has been assured that all the brilliant scientists believe in evolution. And, 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 and so they're not looking at the evidence. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. These guys don't look at the evidence. They don't want to see the evidence. He knows he'd be in trouble if he suddenly quit believing in evolution because all his peer group believes in evolution. And that's a stupid way to live. But I was proud of Major for at least confronting him and said, it's amazing he got angry. And I said, well, what was it Major? I said, he, he said, well, he teaches religion. I said, probably means he majored in theology. He said, I said, I doubt if he's ever had any science except high school science like other kids. And I said, I bet you that he doesn't know a thing about what he's talking about. He just assumes it. 
I've talked to you about that kind of stuff before. Just watch out. I mean, you're going to run into a lot of people like that. Be prepared for it. And you can't change them, but just don't let them change you. Don't let them intimidate you. I mean, it's just too bad. I mean, sorry. Feel sorry for them, but they're that they've got that mindset, but it's really, really uh, sad that they've got PhDs and THDs and all kinds of degrees, and, but they're acting really foolish. Oh, I'll share one more thing with you real quickly <laughs> before I go off. Uh, this, just, this has got nothing to do with anything, but just popped in my mind. Uh, my wife and I, the fourth Saturday of every month, we go to a nursing home in Etowah, Star Regional Nursing Home, at 2 o'clock. And then at 3.30, we go to an um, assisted living place in Athens called Athens Place. And we sing some songs. And I do a Bible study. And we sing a final song, and I pray. And and, and, and this past week at Etowah, the, with the largest group of of these nursing home residents, of course, these are old, old people, many of them near the end of life. And uh, and we had the largest group there since COVID. I think we had about 20 there, which was a big group for this, for this nursing home. Anyway, as when I was finishing up the Bible study and I prayed, I don't normally do this, but I think I need to from now on. I, I, in my prayer, I said, Lord, it may be that some of these people in this room here today have never really trusted Jesus. And, and, and Lord, I pray you'd help them to understand. And so as I talk to, as I talk to the Lord, I kind of share the gospel. You know what I mean? Like help them to understand that, that it's very simple, that they can trust Jesus like a child and just, just repent of their sins and trust you and, and, and realize that you died for them and you rose again. You know, just kind of the gospel in a nutshell in my prayer. And, uh, and I said, Lord, help them realize they can do that right now. So when we finish, we always go around the room. Vicki usually starts on one side of the room, and I start on the other side of the room, and we just go around and, and, and greet the people, you know, I'll hug their necks and, and encourage them a little bit. And they can, they encourage me up sometimes. The ones that are able, some of them can't, but, but they'll, they'll encourage me with their words and smiles. And, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a little time of encouragement. So I walk around the room, and I got to one guy, and I got down close to him, and I said, I'm so glad you were able to be here today. He said, I'm not a Christian. I said, you're not a Christian? He said, no. I said, would you like to be? He said, yes, I would. So I led him to the Lord. You know, he prayed to receive Christ there before we left. And uh, and, and I, when he saw it, I said, now, where's Jesus now? He said, right here. I said, good, good. I said, so you, you, if you know what you said, you know, you, you're a Christian. You belong to him forever. And, I, and he's an old, old man. And I found out later he's a new resident there. He hadn't been there very long. He just had, had a stroke. My son now terribly severe stroke because he's getting around okay. But, uh, but it just shows you never, ever know. You would almost assume that all these old people in the nursing home probably are trusting Jesus. Hmm, he wasn't. So it's just amazing how God does things. It's amazing how God put that in my head to kind of give the gospel in the prayer because I don't usually do that. And, uh, and, and amazing how that man just, just said to me, I'm not a Christian. I thought, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. So it's really sweet. So uh, the Lord brought him to Christ. That's pretty exciting. Old people can get saved too. Well, Father, I pray you'd help us to internalize these things. Help us to learn it well enough that we can share it with others when you give us opportunity. Lord, you, you've given us an incredible amount of evidence and truth. And Lord, it's embarrassing when we're not able to share it. I pray you help us to be more faithful warriors of Christ. Not selfish, not self-centered, not complacent, not lazy. Disciplined followers of Jesus. People you can use. To, to, to help others see truth if they're willing to look. We know, Lord, we run into a lot of close minded skeptics. A lot of them people just won't listen. We know that, Lord. But we also know that there are people out there who are open to the truth if they just hear it. So help us to res respond to them. Help us to listen to you, to be led by you, to interact with them. 
And I pray that many of them might come to know Jesus. And then, Lord, I pray you'd use these kind of things that we're studying and learning to help us, because I know Satan attacks us too, Lord. He likes to try to create doubts in our own minds. And I pray you'd help us to let this evidence you've given us drive out those kind of doubts. I'll let Satan win any victories there. Now, the rest of the day is yours, Lord. Use us as you see fit. Get glory, we pray in Jesus' name.